And the other thing that I forgot to mention was that for the angle, even though these values are going to be the actual angle as the robot moves, um, there's also some offsets applied in uh, this particular uh, model that I've used. So if we look up here in my inputs um, and see each of these values, on the right side over here it converts from degrees to radians because we have to do everything in radians. So this is radians of, of, of that square there. But we notice um, on, on uh, J3 we have radians minus 90 so in the case of uh, joint three, um, my actual angle, um, meaning the, the angle of the robot, uh, in this example here, that my wireframe is actually like that. Um, so you know, my, my, kinematic, my kinematic model is, is for the GH parameters, the wireframe, if you think of it, is set up like that. So you know, mine, is minus 90 and then this one is just the angle of axis 4, the angle of axis 5 and then this one is um, axis 6 is um, is 180 so this this frame here you can see how it's rotated on the z-axis it's rotated 180 out from this one so that's that's that 180 uh, right there in the wireframe so again angle um, in degrees, angle in radians and in and this model, um, axis three uh, is shifted by 90 degrees, and axis six is shifted by 180 degrees. And then just to reiterate, this kinematic model or right here, this or excuse me, the Dena Hartenberg uh, parameters here, um, kind of define the wireframe of my robot, so to speak. So I'm going to go ahead and put this move this uh, picture back down here so we're not going to need this right right away so the next thing you got to do is you're probably wondering okay well that's great you've got all these parameters that kind of define your robot so to speak um, how do we use those to create our transformation matrix um, for J1 so um, First off, um, before we get to that, we'll look at this one above here. Um, I haven't done anything with this yet. This is, I was trying to come up with putting a work frame, you know, being able to shift my world frame. Um, so basically I created a zero transformation matrix and threw that in at the beginning of the chain. And then at the end of the chain, um, I threw in a tool frame. So, um, you know, I would have a different tool frame to play with. Um, that I haven't finished yet or know if I'm even doing it right. Anyway, that's why they're there in the spreadsheet. So just ignore them, pretend they're not there. So going back to this, how do we create each of these frames for each joint? Again, remember what we're trying to do is create a 4x4 transformation matrix for each one of these joints here. And we're going to do that with the Denevit Hardenberg parameters. So to do that, we use this formula here. This is this is the actual Denevit Hartenberg uh, formula to create this uh, this excuse me this matrix here. So we do this one at a time for each joint. So right now we're only going to worry about joint number one, and we'll forget about all the rest of them right now because we're going to use these four parameters to create this entire frame. And these are all of the parameters for joint one. We're going to multiply those by this equation and put these values here. So for example, the value in this first square is the cosine of theta for the joint we're working with. This little i down here, that little i represents the current joint is what it's trying to represent. So the cosine of that value I put here. For my second one, I take the negative sine of theta times the cosine of the link twist. So I take you know, the negative sine of that value um, times the link twist and then uh, this third value is the sine of the joint angle or theta times the sine of the link twist. And so we keep going through these as it's shown here and we apply the math as it's shown. So all of these, all of these for rotation 
are all joint angle times link twist. Okay, all of these have to do with the, the angles. There's no distances in here. None of these three deal with our link offsets or our link lengths. These three in the rotation portion of the matrix only deal with these two columns here, our theta and our, our uh, basically what's known as our, our link twist. Um, so we're only dealing with angles. Now when we get over here to these three, um, this is our X, Y, and Z. So this one is calculated by um, basically um, we've got the link length times cosine of the angle and on this one we've got link length times the sine of the angle and for the Z um, we just have the um, the link offset um, the, the 169 so then we when, once we finish that calculation we have using the magic formula here that these uh, rocket scientists came up with um, we have a 4x4 four four transformation matrix um, that when applied to each one of these joints will actually work correctly to output a, uh, a final position so let's uh, let's talk a little bit more about um, the, the next step um, well let's look at one here I'll just click on each of these so you can see uh, what these do. This one is cosine of that value. This one is negative sine of that one and cosine of that one and so on. So you can you can look through all of these and kind of look and see how the math was done to create this um, create this transformation frame. So now we just do the exact same thing for each one. So you know we, we wouldn't look at uh, that one anymore. Next we would take um, the values from this from this model and apply it to this formula and put it here for the transformation matrix for J2 then we would take these four values apply them uh, times this same formula to get three and so on you do that for all of them so you end up with a transformation matrix for joint one two three four five and six so then you have transformation matrices for all for all six of them so we don't need that anymore I will kind of shrink that up and put it back wherever I had it I think I had it up here somewhere okay so now that we have that now we have to if you recall um, from our example now that we have a frame established for each of these now we have to multiply them all together. I need to multiply this one times this one, and then the product of that times this, and the product of that times this, and so on, until we've multiplied the entire chain together. So that's a really fun part. Um, so on this spreadsheet here, if we come to the next column of matrices, this is where we start multiplying them together. So this first one, I call this R01, or, or you know, it probably shouldn't be an R, it probably should be a T. Um, but anyway, it's zero one. So if we look at this first square, we're going to do uh, multiplication of matrices um, the same way we did in the earlier example. So if I click on this, you can see that I took um, basically I, I took that work frame that is zero transformation doesn't do anything. Um, so you can see I took the first row uh, times the first column and added them all together, and then the same thing, second row, second column or uh, for first row, third column, first row, fourth column, and so on. So as you click through these, you can see how they're multiplied together. So basically what I've done here is multiplied the zero, excuse me, the zero transformation matrix times my J1 matrix. And again, I just did that because I was playing with the idea of trying to, trying to shift my world frame. Um, and I don't know yet if I'm doing that right. I haven't got that far. Um, but you can see here that when I multiply this frame times zero transformation, it, it works. I get these two are the same. This was basically, um, you know, this times zero transformation equals the same thing. So, you know, I basically right here, I've got exactly what I started with. Um, and if I was to apply any rotations to these, it would apply it through the whole robot. Um, so now I take the product, this one, and multiply it times 
the frame for joint two. So that's what we've got here. First row times first column, first row times second column, third, uh, first row times third, and so on. So you click on these and you can see how, you know, this one in the corner is the fourth row times the fourth column all added together. So this one here, zero two, that is the, the product of the first two times the third. And it just keeps doing the same thing all the way down. So this frame here is the product of all of those times three. This one here is the product of those times the fourth joint. The fifth one is the product of all of these ones uh, multiplied together times the fifth. This one is the product of all of those times the sixth frame for the joint six frame. And then the final one, again, I was screwing around with the tool frame. It's a zero transformation matrix, so it doesn't change anything. Um, but essentially here is the final um, output. This is the final transformation matrix that basically represents the um, transformation from the zero frame up to the end effector. So now we have what we've been looking for. So now if we come up here to our final output, let's take a look at this and we will see. And remember earlier that I told you that um, due to the, the, the model and the inverse kinematics and the decoupling that we would use the very center of the wrist, the wrist center to define position. So that being said, if I double click on that one, our X value is coming from the X position of the the product of all the frames up multiplied together up to the frame for five. So there's our X position of where the robot's currently at. Where it's, and then the Y is right here. Uh, there's the Y position for frame five. And here's the Z position for frame five. Okay. So that's pretty easy. X, Y, and Z. All I got to do is go grab the X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z out of frame five. Now the off pitch and roll is a little bit trickier. So because I have this rotation matrix here that defines my rotation for my uh, for where my final sixth frame ended up. And we're going to consider this the, the overall rotation. Um, the question is, okay, well, this is cool. I've got a three by three matrix, but that doesn't mean anything to me. How do I, how do I extract my Euler angles out of that? How do I get my yaw pitch and roll back out of that frame? As you can remember, we put our yaw pitch and roll into that frame or into a previous frame using this formula but now I need to extract and get out of the rotation matrix. I need to get that back out of the rotation matrix. So to do that, we use this formula up here. Okay. And basically what this is, is for, um, for, um, we have to calculate the Y first, as I recall. Um, and so that we take the value in uh, in three one uh, of that frame down here of this pink colored frame. Um, so we take uh, three one. Uh, we take the arctan two function, which takes two values. So in that arctan two function, we take the value in three one, and then we take the square root of um, the value in square one one squared plus the value in square two one squared and then th the value of that math formula of the arctangent two of those three squares gives us the y rotation and then in the x rotation we take arctangent two of the value in three two divided by the cosine of this first value we figured out um, and then the second uh, value of the arctan2 function is square 3 3 divided by the first 
form the first calculation that we did, and then uh, and then for the rotation in z, we use this formula, the arctangent two of uh, the the um, value in square two one divided by the cosine of the first one we figured out, and the second value um, of square one one divided by the cosine. Um, so again, um, some mathematical magic there that I don't fully understand, but um, there it is. So when I do that, you can see here it is, arctangent 2, negative of that square to the square root of that square to the second plus that square to the second. So you can uh, double click on that and come down here and you can see where it's getting those values from. And then you can double click on that one and come down here and see that it's getting those two squares and that it, it's kind of covered up here, but it's actually grabbing the value in cell uh, I7, which is covered by this. Um, anyway, same thing down here, there's A tan 2, and I know that square divided by I8, and that square divided by I8. And so that basically, what that gives you is the angle in radians. And as we talked about before, um, for us to get it back to degrees, we have to convert it from radians back to degrees. So here we have degrees of I7, degrees of I8, degrees of I9. So that pretty much concludes the forward kinematic calculations so that when we set a joint angle, it goes through all of these transformation matrices to produce for us where the X, Y, Z, yaw, pitch, and roll of the end effector of our robot will end up.